Libra. Hello, Libra. This is your forecast for June of 2013 and a busy month for you, especially those of you taking any kind of exams, okay? It's a big month for education and getting those papers done, getting them right, focusing your your drives down this very, very narrow path of uh, getting all the information that you're needing uh, together, okay? It's like gathering that information. And it's also reaching for new information or researching something uh, with a, a fierce scope, should I say. So some of you are really also trying now to figure out where you're heading. Where are you going to go? You know, those of you at college, for example, or taking classes, it's like, okay, I'm taking these classes, but where am I going to go with it? You know, where do I really want to land down the road? You know, am I going to go into this niche or that niche? So that's going to be on your mind uh, also. And for those of you not taking classes or exams this month, uh, a lot of you will see that probably you're going to be <clears throat> also mentoring somebody perhaps, or you're going to be teaching somebody, leading, guiding them, giving advice to them uh, upon their path, you know, supporting them the best you can. So it can go either way here, and it is in the sign of Gemini uh, now that uh, the planets are moving, so it's all information, information. It's in the house of Sagittarius, which is Jupiter, which really wants to kind of broaden one's perspectives on life and perceptions as well. So there, there's also this feeling of spirituality in this because the ninth house uh, likes to anything that has to do with philosophies and the deeper questions of life. Like, why am I here? What is my purpose? What is my calling? You know, where am I heading in life in general? This is above and beyond anything that has to do with like the worldly schools, exams and tests. It's more of your inner spirit wanting to, to really find its path. Uh, and those deeper, higher questions of, you know, is there more than one life? You know, have I lived before? Wanting really to find insights and dig a little deeper into perhaps that of past lives as well. So it's a curious month, you know, for you reaching out there. And uh, it's also Jupiter finalizing its stay here in the ninth house. It's been with you since last year, so a lot of you have already uh, expanded your horizons uh, a whole lot. And uh, it's going to move out of your ninth house into the career house here on the 25th. Uh, so you've had great support. You've really done a lot. Some of you have accelerated in this last year due to the support of Jupiter. Now, if you still have a year or two left, uh, you know, uh, for school, you may not have the feeling of that same support that Jupiter gave you, that extra expansion, but you're still going to feel good though because as it moves into the 10th house, which is your career house, this is where I'm seeing you're kind of thinking now, where am I going with this? Where do I want to end up? Now Jupiter is going to give you a whole lot of pinpointers between uh, July of this year and um, the summer of next year when she'll be residing here in your career house. Some of you might even pick up some outside work while you're studying. So that can be a good thing. Uh, Jupiter likes to expand whatever it touches, and it is a touching now, this career field. And uh, right on top of the month here, um, uh, Venus is also moving into this career field on the 3rd. So, and Mercury is already in there. So you will see that you can start perhaps making some more money, you know, or having new offers, job offers. And I know a lot of you Libra have been asking me on our readings, uh, where's your career heading? When will new things open up? And for those of you, I will say that look for this month, you know, uh, the end of this month and uh, especially into July, where these doors now will definitely be opening up. We have the new moon there on the 8th. It is there in that ninth house. A uh, great day for any kind of mental functions uh, that you're having to do on this day. 
uh, it's also, of course, the, you know, the time of the year, the time of the month to put in these um, intentions for where you're wanting to head between now and next year as far as studies, okay? Making up your mind, um, getting in touch with decisions that you're, you're going to be putting out. Um, applications, uh, maybe even uh, grants, you know, so that you can uh, secure financially next year's study. It sounds like a lot of study, and I know not all of you are at school, <clears throat> but then uh, this is where the ninth house then becomes uh, more of those deeper, more philosophical questions of what's the purpose with my life anyway? It, it's like some of you Libras feel that you might have concluded a, a longer term journey on uh, various levels, okay, completed, fulfill them, and then now what? You know, what do I do now? You know, uh, what was the purpose of achieving this and that? Now that it's here, where do I go from here? So this Jupiter will definitely give you a drive on it. Uh, we also have uh, this Saturn uh, hanging around, still yet in your second house of income and self-worth and you might feel still that some of your income is somewhat limited but at the same time it, it, it doesn't have to be a bad thing because it's also there to secure your income this is what Saturn is really doing it's trying to make you not necessarily frugal what it's trying to do is limit the splurging and the spending and, and whatnot so living a little bit on the edge there with a, a tighter tight budget is really what should I say rewiring your mind financially and how you could actually build more security you know um, which you will see by the end of this transit here in a couple of years so befriend Saturn don't work against them work with him He's always a good uh, alignment uh, or ally to have on our side when we do cooperate. And, and then we have uh, here uh, 17th, a new drive and focus. And, and maybe what you've kind of been thinking here the first half of the month as far as direction and where you want to go might come together here with uh, an epiphany on the 17th, okay? Because that Mars is... Um, in a great aspect to Uranus, and Uranus will give you brilliant flashes of insight. It will just like, in one second flash, open up the doors wide so you could see it in an instantaneously flash of, now I know where I'm going. You know, it, it's like that lightning bolt coming down, and then taking action on it, and then the following couple of days, I see you kind of celebrating that. So it must be an intuition that you are gonna feel good about and then the Sun and Jupiter, they're going to conjunct, meaning they're going to be side by side in the skies. And uh, that Jupiter it wants to expand where your Sun is. And you are the Sun. You are that I am Sun in your chart. So to me, that kind of really shows that you're in, in a really good place. Uh, Mercury there is communicating. It's chatting along with Venus about this whole scenario of these like three or four days and what seemingly magically has come together for you. Pay attention to those days. And then right after that, and even on the same day as Mercury and, and Venus is having such a party, the sun is moving into Cancer, which is your house of career uh, and nurturing, you know, so uh, that will take the shift out of the ninth house of this higher thinking and schooling and education. Uh, Jupiter falling right behind it there on the 25th. So now you're having this full shift moving into your career, which we're going to talk that much more about next month on your July forecast, because this is when, you know, the, the scene is set for that party. But there on the 25th and 26th, you are having some great support here from some authority figure, whoever that may be. It could be your own inner authority, really feeling strong coming out. It could be with a father figure, an uncle, grandfather figure. It could be a CEO, you know, supervisor, something, somewhere, somebody, which is going to be very supportive as to what it is you're doing and what it is you're aiming for and acting upon great great day to, to have uh, an interview for example and present your dreams 
because the sun is also trying to Neptune. Let me show what's going on here because I don't normally go into configurations um, for you so it gets too complicated, but we're having a kite this month. And a kite kind of looks like this, exactly like a kite. Now, it's really perfect angles because we have the sun and Jupiter on top of the kite, so it's carrying, it's lifting here, being supported uh, by Saturn and Neptune. The sun is you, Jupiter is everything that it wants to expand for you. Neptune is the dream, and when these two come together, it's like Jupiter is telling Neptune to expand the dream. Don't think little. Don't dream little. Neptune dreams. It's like, go for it. Go big or go home. Okay, and you're feeling it. And normally you're kind of cautious because you always like to weigh things back and forth. You know, you're not really somebody to jump on the bag wagon. You know, uh, and thinking there's always goal there. Um, but, but it's saying dream big. Why? Because we have Saturn, which normally gives us our challenges and which is always that little voice. Oh, you got to be cautious. No, you can't go there. You know, Saturn has rings, so it will limit you. Not this time. Saturn here is in a good configuration to Jupiter. So when you're expanding, Saturn's saying go for it because I got your back. I'm holding you right here. You know, go leap off that cliff. I am your safety net. And having those here is fantastic, just in this trine. But then on the kite, coming down here, we have the full moon and Pluto. The full moon in itself to have there is a conclusion of this. So that's good to have. But this full moon, and we've had just, we've just been through three eclipses here, two solar and one lunar. That energy from the last month uh, and two is still carrying over to us now. This is not an eclipse moon, but it is a full moon carrying over that energy. Pluto saying that whatever no longer works, the old self, the old I, I'm going to just, you know, weed that off. The full moon wants to come in and renew. And that's the beauty of a very positive Pluto is that transformation. That, that new self merging out. It's the bird phoenix, you know, coming out with this new you in bringing in the intense energy of Scorpio, the dream of Pisces. It couldn't be better. I'm, I'm really excited about this for you guys. So I'd like to hear your feedback after the fact, which is the end of the month. Come back and say what it did for you, okay? So I wish you the best. All I just want to end up with here is to, to let you know we are having a Mercury retrograde starting on the 26th. So, you know, we don't like to sign papers, contracts, or anything written um, that might be delayed due to the retrograde. So don't start anything new or buy any big money objects um, because they can be faulty when you get them home and then, you know, delays, delays, delays. So. Yeah, until third week of July, lay low on anything new. Uh, you can work with old stuff, you know, that doesn't matter. It, it won't do anything wrong there. But it's those new ideas you have, wait to the end of July for it. So I guess that's what we have, uh, Libra. And it's always very inspiring to talk to you. And I'll see you next month. Bye now. Listen to your rising sign and moon sign too on the way out. And perhaps that of your partner. And I will see you again. Bye now.